Good morning, everyone. My name is Miss Long. Sorry, I'm a ninth and 10th grade English teacher at Alma Bryant High School. And I've been asked that for the next six weeks that I work with you guys to kind of help you get, you know, get through this time. Guys, this is, it's very weird for us and I know it's weird for you guys, but my job is to kind of help you through this process and make it go a little bit more smoothly. So we're gonna work through some of these objectives together and if you've received your packet by now, we're gonna be working a little bit in that packet today. So if you have it with you, go ahead and get it out. Now, if you don't have the packet, don't worry. We, you, you can get these for later viewing. And if you would like to get out a sheet of paper to take some notes, there is some information that I will be giving you that you may want to uh, write down, okay? So I'm gonna give you just a second to get your things together. So what we're going to be looking at this week is determining a theme or a central idea of a text and see how that theme or that central idea develops. Develops means it grows or it changes throughout that text. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And I know that sometimes the text that we see, it may be a little, you know, maybe a little intimidating, but I hope to give you some tips that will help you as you're reading through the material in your packets. I wanna give you some tips on how to kind of um, make that process a little bit easier, okay? Before we look at a text, however, what I want to do is show you um, some uh, definitions and show you an illustration. So if you are taking notes, this would be some good information to jot down. So what is central idea? Central idea is what a text is about or all the details that center around that one idea. So this is sometimes confused with theme. Um, sometimes students get these two confused and they're very similar. And in fact, sometimes central idea is a theme, but I don't want you to get the two confused. Break it down this way. A theme is basically a focus in the text that grows or changes throughout that text. And often we call it a lesson learned. So for example, think about Finding Nemo. We've probably all seen Finding Nemo, right? Um, Finding Nemo, if I were to ask you, what is Finding Nemo about? You would probably say, well, it's about a fish who gets lost and his dad comes and finds him, right? That's the central idea of Finding Nemo. But if I ask you, what is a theme of Finding Nemo? One that really comes to my mind, and we see this all throughout the film, Dory says it, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming is a theme. It's an idea that we see throughout that text, uh, that film, and films are text. But throughout that film, we see that Dory keeps reminding us, just keep going despite the obstacles. So that's the difference between um, central idea and theme. Now, let's, I wanna give you an illustration before we look at a text. I want you to take a minute, it may be a little hard to see, um, but I want you to take a minute and look at this picture. Uh, you can't see my rainbow here, but there's a rainbow right here and we have um, a park. Now, if I were to ask you what this is a picture of, you probably would say it's a picture of a park, right? Um, and in fact, you maybe see a lot of different details here. And in fact, all of these details go into creating this picture. But what is the picture? What is the one idea that this picture centers around? You have the lights that shine over the park. You have the rainbow that's around the park. You have the walking track coming around the park, the bleachers beside the park. Everything comes back to that central point of the park. So if I were to ask you what's the central idea of a picture, you would say, well, this is a picture of a park. Now I want you to see how this works for theme. 
again, it's hard to see. I apologize. But this is, um, if we were to focus on one point, and this point being the rainbow, all of a sudden, we get a whole nother idea here. So I want to tell you a little story. I was walking through uh, the park the other day, and in fact, several of my friends and I, we were, we were tired of being stuck inside. I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> um, and walking is a really good uh, approved activity for right now. And so we decided let's get out and let's walk. And it's become a daily routine for us. So we were walking down the street and we were, um, we were, a rain cloud was hovering over us. And in fact, we were walking, trying to get out of the, the rain cloud because it was uh, beginning to sprinkle on us. And we get to the park. And when we do, I turn around and I have this moment because what do I see? I see this rainbow. And, you know, um, I don't know about you, but this has kind of been a stormy time for me. Um, I was really nervous. I was worried about even doing this right here, that we're, what we're doing today. I was nervous about our online classes starting, worried about my kids, you know, what are, what are my students going to be doing over these next few weeks? How are they going to do? So a lot of these worries in my head. And in fact, I felt a little stormy. And I look back there and I see that rainbow. And you know what that focus on that rainbow, you know what that did? Uh, I decided, let me take a picture of it right now. And that rainbow reminds me that even though that storm is back there, that rainbow reminds me that there is still hope and beauty despite that storm. And guys, that's theme. Okay? One detail can bring a whole nother dimension to this picture. Okay? So think about it that way. Now we're going to apply this to a text, okay? If you're taking notes, you may want to jot down this information. Authors have different ways of presenting information, and we call that author style. Okay, and all different authors have different ways of, sh of showing this. And in fact, think about, for example, if you and your siblings have done something this week, or the last couple of weeks, it was really fun, and you were trying to tell your grandmother about it, you would tell the story differently than your sibling would, right? Um, because we're different people. Same thing with author style, okay? So we're going to look at a couple different texts and see how they approach, you know, how, see how we find central idea and theme through their different approaches. And guys, texts have lots of information, okay? And the texts that you will be working with this week are poems. Now, poetry is often some of the hardest text to break down. And they are not supposed to be. You know, I also teach creative writing. So when I'm teaching my students how to write a poem, I tell them, I say, guys, remember that we're not here to confuse our reader. Our reader should know what it is that this poem is about. And in fact, when I was in grad school, when I was writing poetry, I remember one of my professors said, oh, this is what your poem's about. Put that in the title. And often, the title is what that poem is about. It often does show that central idea. So kind of keep that in mind. And just remember, as you're reading through the poems this week, don't, don't let that, um, you know, they're not there to confuse you. Don't let all the information, all the words, you know, intimidate you. So um, it is definitely uh, doable to break it down into central idea and to break it down and find that theme. So just remember to ask yourself, what is the main concept that the text addresses? And that's your central idea. What details create a focus, that rainbow, okay, in the text? That is your theme. So even though you have lots of ways of looking at a text, just remember, if you're using those details to show that idea, you're doing your job, okay? So let's do this together. Okay, the texts that I have selected today, uh, one of them, we're going to look at one from your packet, but I'm also using one called We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Um, it's one of my favorite poems. I love it. And even though we normally read this text in 10th grade, I love using it for 9th grade because 
I think that we can all relate, and I'll show you how. Um, let me give you a little bit of background on Paul Lawrence Dunbar that will kind of help you determine that central idea. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was an African-American poet at the turn of the 20th century, which means he was writing about 50 years past slavery, but about 50 years before the Civil Rights Movement. So kind of keep that in mind as we're reading. Okay, I'm going to read the poem for you. And as I'm reading, I want you to think about what are some images, what are some details that you pull out that are really important, that you think are really important, okay? Maybe some um, wording that jumps out at you, okay? And if you have your sheet of paper, maybe jot them down. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but O oh, great Christ, to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing. But oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. So what are some details that you feel like kind of stick out to you? And in fact, if I were to ask you what's one word that you think is most important in this poem, what would you say? What does it constantly go back to? That mask, right? And in fact, if we were to talk about the central idea of this poem, we'd say, well, this is a poem about a mask. But let's break it down. What type of mask is this? You know, is this a mask that we wear at Mardi Gras? Is it a physical mask? Is it a physical mask like you see people wearing to the grocery store nowadays? Is it there to cover our faces? Or is this mask more figurative, meaning, it's not a literal physical mask. It doesn't cover our faces, but maybe it covers something inside of us, right? What do you think? Yeah, this is a figurative mask, right? Now, how do we know that? If we go back to the poem, we see some details that show us that this mask is figurative, not literal. And one of those, is uh, it go, this is one of the, the phrases that really jumps out to me. With torn and bleeding hearts, we smile. Now, we can assume here that this is not a physical heart, right? Because if it's torn and bleeding, then that heart is dead, right? But yet those people still smile and they're crying and they're crying out to God. So we see that these people are alive. This is not a physical mask. So what is it? that this mask is hiding. And that will kind of lead us to our theme. Remember that Paul Lawrence Dunbar was speaking to primarily an African-American audience, or at least to an audience to show what African-Americans were experiencing during this time period when their rights are in limbo. Um, so remember that. And so even though he's talking to that audience, is this something that we can apply today in 21st century America? Yes. How many times would you say that you show everyone everything about you? I don't know about you, but I don't show people the true 100% of who I am. Why? Because we don't want people to judge us. We don't want people to you know, think something, um, that, something negatively about us. So we hide that part of ourselves, right? So yeah, we can definitely apply this to ourselves. So what's the theme that we see in this poem? Maybe it's everyone has something to hide, or maybe it's that we don't want people to see who we truly are, okay? Now, let's look at a poem in your packet. If you have your packet with you, I want you to open up to page 761. And you'll see here, on page 761, 
This is a poem, it's called The Beginning of the End of the World by Lucille Clifton. And we're going to read through this poem together. So if you have it, you know, um, feel free to, as you go, be looking for some details that you feel like are really important. Okay, maybe circle them, underline them, you know, those details that really stick out to you. How many of you have had an encounter with a cockroach before? I don't know about you guys, but when I see a roach, I freak out. <laughs> uh, I end up going nuts. Um, he's probably, the, that little cockroach is probably way crazier than I am once I get after him. But this is an interesting poem. Uh, Lucille Clifton is also an African-American poet. She's writing many years past um, Dunbar. But maybe keep that in mind as you're reading. You know, um, we don't always have to know the background of a poet to know what a poet's getting at, however. And in fact, I don't want you to always you know, use that to help you figure that out. But do look, listen to the description of these roaches as we go through this poem. What is maybe different than what we usually assume? Maybe the morning the roaches walked into the kitchen bold with their bad selves, marching up out of the drains, not like soldiers, like priests, grim and patient in the sink. And when we ran the water trying to drown them as if they were soldiers, they seemed to bow their sad heads. For us, not at us, and march single file away. Maybe then the morning we rose from our beds, as always, listening for the bang at the end of the world. Maybe then, when we heard only the tiny tapping and saw them dark and prayerful in the kitchen. Maybe then, when we watched them turn from us, faithless at last, and walk in a long line away. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to show you how I would tackle this poem, but I want you to take just a minute and I want you to jot down what are some specific events that you see happening. And if you, um, in fact, this is your exercise that you will be turning in this week for a minor grade. Um, page 761, this is part of what you'll be doing, okay? But I want you to, you to see how I would do this, okay? Now, what are some specific events that you see happening? What are some words or details that stand out? Remember to look at maybe what's different about these roaches. Look at how they're described. Listen to the tone that Lucille Clifton uses. What are some powerful images, maybe even colors that you see? It may not be mentioned, but what colors do you see in your head? And then I want you to come up with what are some possible themes based on these? I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes to do that, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when I do that. Okay? Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like in chart form when I do this. Okay, some events that I feel like are important is that first of all, roaches walking. If you have ever had one of those horrible encounters with a roach, that roach is not walking. I can tell you that it's usually flying at us in their most defensive manner, right? <laughs> um, marching up out of the drains, not like soldiers, not on the defensive not meaning to offend us, meaning they're not taking the offense. They're not fighting. Trying to drown the roaches. Who's doing the drowning? We are, right? Who's the victim in this poem? Listening for the bang at the end of the world. Faithless at last. Those are some uh, lines that kind of stick out to me, some events that are happening that stick out to me. And look at these details that I feel like are very important like priest, grim and patient. 
bow their sad heads. Tiny tapping. Dark and prayerful. You know, I don't know about you guys, but if you are, if it's the middle of the night and you hear a roach, it sounds like a tank coming through your house, but definitely not the description we see here. So maybe what are some themes that we could use to say, what is she trying to teach us through these roaches? One that comes to me is learning to embrace one's fate with dignity. Now, is she talking about roaches here? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Also look at the description of these roaches. Definitely not the way we normally describe a roach, right? Do you think maybe she's trying to teach us not to judge based on a stereotype? Yeah, probably so, right? And so those are some possible themes merely associated with these specific details. And guys, it's as simple as that. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but you can do it. Okay, all right, so before we close, I want to give you some tips on how to approach the rest of your texts that are due this week, okay, or at least that you're working on this week, okay? Um, you have three poems all dealing with the end of the world. That's your central idea. They're talking about the end of the world, but they're talking about it in a very different way. Each writer is each poet is approaching this topic in a different way. So I want you to keep this in mind. What events are being described? Who or what is mentioned often? And what is the importance of that repetition? The powwow at the end of the world by Sherman Alexi, he mentions several words and phrasing often. Why? He does that on purpose. So what is it that he wants us to get through that? Okay, what are some powerful images and then come up with what is that lesson learned, okay? All right, guys, we're just about done for the day. Um, that's about all the time I have um, with you today. I hope this helps a little bit. I will be seeing you next week, and we will be continuing with Central Idea and Theme, looking at it in a longer text. So good luck, and I'll see you again next week. <laughs>